everyone, welcome to my Lightroom series where I'll be covering how I've refined my workflow over the last six years. I'll cover import to export and everything in between. Let's get started. Today we're going to cover the library module and that's going to cover catalog, folders, and collections. Let's hop over to Lightroom and get started. Okay, now that we're in Lightroom, let's uh, take a look here at the library module. You can see um, you've got a grid layout here. You also have a loop layout as well. Some compare, X and Y, and some survey. This you can select multiple and kind of look at different ones. Um, search by faces, things like that. So if I select these four photos, I can kind of view them side by side and see what's going on with them there. So kind of some cool features down here. Let's go a step back and dig into organization of the library. So over here you've got your navigator. This is more of a kind of a thumbnail view of the photo. You can zoom in you know, through here and stuff. Um, but you don't use the navigator a whole lot. Now the catalog, folders, and collections, and published services is, is what we'll mostly be talking about today. So the catalog, this is just kind of an overview of your catalog. So this is looking at all photographs, all your synced photographs, if you have Lightroom synced with your mobile. Your qu a quick collection, which is can be used for a number of different things. Sometimes I'll use that to add photos to like a queue of photos that I need to edit or photos that I need to uh, export or something like that. Or if I'm looking for a certain uh, grouping of photos, I'll go through my catalog and add them to the quick collection and, and then add those to another collection later on or something. And then you have your previous import and that's just kind of the last photos imported. Now your folders, this is the folder, so this is reading your folders that are coming from your hard, hard drive. So if you look at this, this is my data one, this is the actual name of my hard drive. And then I have um, these three, three folders with, uh, with photos in there. So if you right click on this, you can come down and show in Finder or show in Explorer, I'm sure, in, in Windows. And that will actually take you to your folder in your in your hard drive so you see that's the path for that for that folder there so this is kind of the um, the, the basic organization now collections is is what you can use to um, put these into different um, different types of collections so you can see here by default Lightroom has some smart collections so it's got colored red five stars past month recently modified videos without keywords and you know so those are just kind of generic things um, let's go ahead and create a new collection so you just come over hit the plus and we're going to create a collection and let's call this stony 16 to 35 gm and now you can add this to a collection which uh, we're not going to do right now because we just have the smart collection or collection set so we're just going to um, include selected photos. Um, I'm going to uncheck that for now and we'll go back and add those. And then I'm going to hit create. So now I've got this Sony 16 to 35 GM. So what I can do is I can take my photos that I've got. Let me go back to all photographs here. And I can take all of these photos of my 16 to 35 lens and I can drag them over into this collection. So that's one way to do it. The other, another option is, is uh, I can use, so this is a collection of just the photos of the lens itself. I usually use smart collections to find photos taken with that specific lens. So let me show you how to create a smart collection here. So you can select your smart collections, right click, and create a smart collection. So what that does is that gives you a list of criteria or rules that your that ha, that your photographs have to meet in order to make it into that collection. So we're going to you can match any all or none of the following rules. So we're going to do 
And we're going to change this to, uh, let's see, where's the lens? Other metadata, uh, camera info, lens. There we go. And so lens is 16 to 35. F 2.8 GM. I believe that's what it's called. We'll see if that we'll see if that finds those. It did not. So let's go back and find some photos taken with that lens and see what we can come up with here. I don't know if I've taken any in this catalog. Maybe that's a bad one to choose. Let's pick the 85. So let's edit this smart collection. I'm going to call this 85 millimeter. And we'll call this 85 f1.8. Save. And that doesn't work. So let's come over to the metadata here and see what the lens title is actually come up here okay it's called fe 85 f 1.8 okay so we need to change it to match that exactly so come back over edit smart collection fe 85 millimeter f 1.8 save now there you go there's 14 photos in there taken with that so uh, Smart Collections and Collections is a good way to organize your photos. Uh, another another thing you can do is create a collection set, which what that's what this collection, this Smart Collections is. So if we create a, oops, not a Smart Collection. So if we create a collection set, we can call this, um, we'll call this uh, Landscapes or Landscape, right? And then we could create, and then what you can do, and this is what I do is when I, um, go on a trip or do something I'll create a collection and I'll put that under a landscape and I'll call this like uh, you know Zion National Park or whatever the collection is or you can you can get very specific for those or you can get generic and call uh, and look for let's create a collection called you know maybe pine trees or something like that or you can create you know lakes or just different things like that and now these are, when you create a collection, that's just a, it's, I'd call it a dumb collection where you have to manually drag the photos into that collection. Uh, if you do the smart collection, then you can use photographs that maybe you um, go through and add keywords like lake or water or, you know, or something like that. You can change this to use keywords. And I'll do... I think, yeah, other, other metadata keywords, and you can call this pine trees. And then any photos that you have that have pine trees, you would use keywords to, to filter those out, and you then have a smart collection. So that's a couple ways to use collections there. And now on down to publish services. This gets into it a little bit more um, where you can... Um, these are some of the defaults. Some of these I've added and, and paid for um, or added in the uh, in this find more services online. Let's go ahead and let's show you how to do that. So let's do find more services online and this takes you to Adobe's uh, extension app integrations uh, and you can search for um, let's maybe let's see if Facebook has a has a new plugin. I know they used to have one but and nixed it a couple years ago. No extensions found. So let's look for Smug Mug. So there's your Smug Mug Publish plugin. And here's one for Mac OS. And that one's done by some guy, and this is done by Smug Mug. Um, you go here, you download it, and I've already got it installed. Once you download it, you come over in here and you hit plus, go to publishing manager, and you add it, then you configure it here. So we'll call this high resolution. And then you can connect to your smug mug, you go and you basically sign in, and you get this authorization complete, it's done. That should then show your account, and that will sync your folders and galleries. I don't want to sync photos. Yes, we'll see in comments. 
save. And now that will take a minute, but that will then sink in your smug mug uh, folder structure. So you can see I've got you know, photos by years and then I've got my different galleries and things like that. So um, then when I've uh, edited a photo here, so let's go into, so I have uh, these set up with some smart folders that take any photos that have any editing or any uh, color label to them. They get put into my month here, here and then it gets published up to Smug Mug and gets backed up online. So, but so that just brings in your Smug Mug stuff so you can then add photos to wherever you need to there. So let's say we edited one of these photos and we want to put it into our, I think I've got a Ben Lohman gallery somewhere in here. Anyways, I've got a Ben Lohman gallery so I'd add that to that and I'd hit publish. That gets published to my website and there you go. I can sell prints of that or do whatever else I need to. So that's kind of how you set up these published services. You can find all kinds of different ones. So that's kind of the, the navigation and collections over here. Again, you have import and export. So export is another video we'll get into. While we're still here, still here on the library, um, here's some, we'll hop over to the right side here. So you have your histogram. Um, quick develop so if you want to throw on one of your presets or a uh, default preset or any presets that you've got you can do that here and you can actually change the crop and do some quick things here without going into the develop module so you can just do some quick edits and it just does it on these these thumbnails so I'll kind of show you here so we can bump up the exposure a third stop at a time and you know make some adjustments here the double arrows go more the single arrows go a little bit less so um, you know you can make some quick adjustments and it doesn't do a full uh, one to one preview so if you went over in a develop module you see it takes a minute to load and it will load up a, a one to one preview and then you can make adjustments from here but you can do kind of quick adjustments in the library module uh, pretty quick there or in that quick develop uh, and then keywording, so you can come in and add keywords, keyword sets. We'll, I'll do another video on that that goes into depth on the keywords and how to set up these keyword sets. And then you have a keyword list here. Uh, again, metadata, I showed you how to do that in the, uh, in the other video. And again, like I said, some of these plugins will allow you to add different things in here. So 500px, you can add a title description and when you use that publisher and it publishes up to your 500px account, it will automatically add those uh, things into the into the photo. Same with the Lightroom Instagram one. And then comments, uh, I've never really had had those work, so we'll just ignore that for now. And then sync and sync settings, so that's uh, an option. So let's say we take this photo and we want to sync these settings here. So settings is going to be your settings here, your edit edit settings sync is going to be your metadata settings so if you change the metadata for one and you want to sync that for all of them you can come in and you know select all of these hit sync and that will sync your metadata there and if you have these other things checked you know you can add a bunch of hashtags and have those synced in in those so that's what that is. And then down here along the bottom, we'll touch on this a little bit more. So thumbnails, this is your, controls your thumbnail size. You can also hit command plus or minus, no, I lied. Command plus zooms into loop mode. Command minus goes out to grid mode. And then you have, uh, you can do a play. You can go next photo, use these. You can flip your photos here. We don't want to do that. You can select your colors here, star, pick or reject photos. You can sort by all types of different options here. Ascending and descending, you can use this uh, spray can painter thing. And you can paint keywords, you can paint labels, metadata, things like that. So I use this quite often where I'll, I'll go through and use a, maybe a set of keywords to to tag you know a lens or something like that so we'll select that 
we'll go and we'll just paint these things. And it's kind of a quick way to go through and paint different labels. So I use that a lot when I do, uh, do photo shoots with a group of different people, maybe some dancers or something. And I need to label that dancer name so that I can create a smart catalog for them or a smart collection. And uh, I'll go through and I'll use that paint can to tag those uh, different photos. Kind of a handy little thing and then you just come and click on that afterwards. Bonus tip for you here is I want to show you how to change the nameplate stuff up here. So if you right click on this, your identity plate, you can do a personalize, a Lightroom Classic, or your Adobe ID. But let's go ahead and do a, a personalize and let's go into edit identity plate and that will bring up this little uh, editor here. You can do a font and you can choose colors and different things like that or you can use a graphical identity plate so you can use an image so if you have a uh, company logo or something like that you can um, use that so I'm gonna go ahead and add my company logo here so I've got design and I'm gonna go into photo logo and I think it was this one that worked I had to crop it down a little bit but so if we choose this, now you can see that's my logo up there. And then I can change the right side over here, the live, the module settings here. So um, I'm gonna change this to a font that I like. Let's go with that one. And yeah, regular is fine, maybe a little bit smaller. That's too small, still too small. Yeah, that works. And then you can change the color. So this right here is the highlighted color. So I'm gonna go with red. And then this one is the unselected. So you can see that's kind of gray. So I think I like that, that's good. Then you hit okay. And so now you've got a nice personalized um, catalog look. So that's kind of your bonus tip for this video. NASA library module. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next lesson where we'll dive into the develop module. Thanks for watching. Bye.